the baptism of the Lord marks the conclusion of Christmas time and signals the beginning of ordinary time. Today, I want to make use of Piero della Francesca's baptism of Christ to reflect on two things. First of all, the link between the Epiphany, the Adoration of the Magi, and the baptism of the Lord, and then also to reflect on the meaning of our own baptism. The Eastern tradition says the number of the Magi at 12, but the Western tradition says the number at 3, probably based on the three gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh presented to the infants, as in Matthew, the second chapter, verse 11. We have all seen many, many cartoons telling us how impractical these gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh are for the infant Jesus. But what is their symbolic meaning? In this painting by Abraham Blomart, the first king is kneeling down in adoration towards the infant Jesus and is holding in his hands the first gift of gold. But Jesus is not looking at the gold. Jesus is looking straight into the eyes of the king. The hand of the king is reaching out towards the small hand of the infant Jesus. In this painting, Abraham Blomart is telling us that it is Jesus himself who is our gift. It is Jesus who gives us. The gifts of gold, frank incense and myrrh spell out very clearly the gift that Jesus is giving us by becoming a human being like us. First of all, the gift of gold proclaims that he is our king, a king that cares, protects, smiles and gives dignity to every human being. The gift of frank incense proclaims that Jesus is now our priest, a priest that prays for us, a priest that opens the heaven for us and lifts us up into the very presence of God. And finally, the gift of myrrh proclaims that Jesus now is our prophet, a prophet who speaks for the voiceless, for the powerless, for the vulnerable, for those who are weak, but he does not only speak on our behalf, he also defends us and he is even prepared to lay down his life for each one of us. But what does this have to do with the baptism of Jesus? John the Baptist very reluctantly agrees to baptize Jesus because John's baptism is a baptism of repentance and Jesus does not need to repent. If anything, he repents on our behalf. But what happens after the baptism is very important. After the baptism, the Gospels tell us that the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. And then there was a voice from heaven that proclaimed, that manifested that he is the Son of God. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Let us now look at the way Piero della Francesca portrays this event. Firstly, the two main characters, Jesus and John the Baptist. John the Baptist is about to baptize Jesus by pouring water rather than immersion like it would have been at the Jordan. Secondly, you can also see that the heavens have opened completely. Also, he portrays very clearly the dove descending upon Jesus, but he couldn't portray the voice of God, but you can see there is a reflection of the voice of God on the three angels on the left-hand side of the painting. Human beings might not be able to hear those words, but they know they can hear there is something divine happening in this moment. But there are also other important details to really look at. In the distance, you can actually see several persons dressed in royal robes, red and blue. They are moving away from the scene. 
they are those who are too full of themselves and do not bother about receiving the gifts that Jesus is offering them. But then, in the close foreground to the right-hand side of the painting, we see a person who has undressed himself and is now putting on a white garment. What is happening here? Jesus has become one of us, like us, has taken on our flesh. But now, through baptism, He's inviting us, he's offering us the great gift of becoming like him. He's inviting us, challenging us to become kings, priests and prophets like him. Through baptism, we are called to a new life. We are called to accept the privileges and the responsibilities of becoming, of being kings, priests, and prophets like Jesus Christ. But first of all, we had to take off our old self, our old self, all self-importance, self-interest, and put on a new vest, a new white garment. We are called to put on Christ so that we can go out and live our daily life as kings, kings who care for their brothers and sisters, has priests who literally pray every day for our brothers and sisters and lift them up to God so that through our prayer we can become the prophets like Jesus who reach out, who speak, who defend them, who are even prepared to live their whole life, to lay down their lives for those who are in need. And Paul Francis assures us in the joy of the gospel that only in living for others has their kings, their priests, and their prophets that we can set ourselves free from sin, sorrow, inner emptiness, and loneliness. As we dress ourselves every morning for the day, that action can become a renewal of our baptismal privileges and responsibilities to go out and live that particular day as Jesus' kings, priests and prophets through our simple, daily, concrete actions. And again, Pope Francis assures us in the joy of the gospel that by starting every day, by putting on Christ, and going out to live as his priests, prophets, and kings, only then our joy will constantly be born anew.